uh, I'll be explaining what those acronyms mean, and OEP for language learning in your classrooms. <clears throat> let's, get, let's get started here. Um, <clears throat> so as I said, uh, our logo, I love our logo. Natalie created it years ago, and I'm st I still really like it. It's focused on OER. It's in the heart of our acronym. We're the center for OER, and of course, language learning is what brings us all together. So O is open, and that means the whole point is that education is a social system, but it tends to shut down. It tends to close people out. We want to keep open. We want to keep education as open to as many people as possible. That means that we want them to have access, and there are various barriers to access, namely money, finances. <clears throat> at the <clears throat> excuse me, at the college level. Tuition is going up and it's shutting people out of access. They don't have access to uh, educational opportunities. So um, more, more specifically, Open Educational Resource, or OER, refers to, as I say here, educational material offered freely for anyone to use involving uh, the following permissions through an open license. That last two words, that open license, is important. If it doesn't have it's free stuff on the internet, that is not necessarily an OER. It must carry an open license. And we'll be talking about those in just a minute. Um, I will draw your attention if you look at this slide at the bottom of the screen, there's something that says CC BY. That is an open license. In fact, everything that we're sharing with you today and open education is really just about sharing must have an open license that will allow you to do all of these, the, what we call the five R's, retain, reuse, redistribute, remix, and revise. So retain, now <clears throat> let me explain what those rights are. Retain, when you, um, in, in, the, in the digital era, you can now, um, you can rent a textbook from a publishing company that's entirely digital, and at the end of the semester, it disappears it literally goes away from, from your desktop, from your computer. But in, in uh, the world of open education, we believe that it's important for the students once they've taken a course to retain those materials because they may wanna go back and use those. Uh, reuse simply means copy. Uh, you know, when you have a textbook, you're not supposed to make a copy uh, of that textbook. Uh, of course, uh, language teachers violate that, that, that copyright law all the time because we, take, we make copies of all kinds of things uh, to use in our classrooms. Redistribute just means that you make multiple copies and you pass them out. That's why it looks like a copy machine here. So you don't want to make one copy because you have multiple students. You want to make copies for all of your students. Remix, of course, means to take a little bit from this textbook and put it together with a little bit from that textbook. That's the notion of remixing, are also called mashups. And finally, um, even to the granular level of revising, we're allowing some, some of these licenses will allow you to go into the, 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 the textbook. I keep using the word textbook, but it could be anything. It can be a, a lesson plan and actually change the words. So imagine if I have a photograph of my students and you wanna take my lesson plan or my activity and you wanna replace my photograph with your photograph, that's fine, that's called a revision. So these are called the five R's, retain, reuse, redistribute, remix, and revise. And together they form the, the, the world of copyright permissions that we're gonna negotiate in open